This is episode number 171 of the Guns Magazine podcast. Hi there, and welcome to the Guns Magazine podcast, one of the shooting world's biggest gun talk programs. I'm your host and the editor of Guns Magazine, Brent Wheat. Thanks for joining us as we talk to the interesting folks who make up the world of shooting, hunting, law enforcement, and the firearms industry. Before we get started, let's hear a quick word from our sponsor, Four Patriots. Let's face it, if you don't have electricity, you're living in the Stone Age. But with the Patriot Power Sidekick from Four Patriots, you get a solar generator that doesn't need installation. It's quick, easy, and portable, on the go, or even inside. The Patriot Power Sidekick is small, about the size of a lunchbox, but it's powerful. Powerful enough for your phones, medical devices, or even a mini fridge. The setup comes with a free solar panel, free shipping, a 365-day satisfaction guarantee, and best of all, you get 10% off your first purchase by typing in the code GUNMAG at checkout. That's 4 Use the code GUNMAG. This year was a great one for new gun introductions at the 2023 Shooting, Hunting, Outdoor Trades, or SHOT, show in Las Vegas a couple of weeks ago. Now that the dust has settled, for an overview of all the cool new auto pistols, we're going to the expert and my sometimes partner in crime, Tom McHale. He's the editor of our sister publication, American Handgunner. Now, here's Tom McHale with our rundown of some of the new pistols you'll be seeing in your local gun shop in 2023. Well, good afternoon, Tom McHale. Good afternoon. Welcome back to the Guns Magazine podcast, of which you've appeared on many, many times. But today, it, we are squarely in your wheelhouse because we're going to talk about the cool new auto pistols that have been dropped on the industry after the 2023 SHOT Show. So we should have a plenty to talk about, wouldn't you say? Well, I'm I'm glad that's the topic because in a way I feel like I'm consorting with the enemy here. It, it almost feels disloyal to to take off the American handgunner hat and put on yeah. that uh got to say it, Guns Magazine hat. Yeah, well. But I'll do it. I'll I'll take one for the team. Okay. It's okay. Please do. <laughs> and and you're right though. That I think um as we were talking about before the show, it's probably a good idea to kind of narrow the focus a little bit. Yeah. Um, and, and I would like to say to all the revolver aficionados out there, I think that's worthy of its own show. Yeah, definitely. So what I did, do you notice what I just did in public in front of everyone? I just invited <laughs> myself me. back yeah. for another episode. I'm all for it. You know, that's that's the cool thing here at FMG Publications, which owns uh, both of our magazines. We're, we're the revolver guys. The other magazines, even a lot of their writers are, what's that thing with the wheel that spins and you put bullets in it? Hey, we got them. We got revolvers here. We're, we are six gunners at heart. So that continues to be probably the most important topical or most popular topic. Yeah, definitely. For us. I mean, when, when we have a revolver heavy issue, boy, the reader mails come in and people yep. love it. Exactly. So classic nostalgia. Yep. Craftsmanship. It's all there. Yep. Well, I'm going to do a, a a quick left turn sidebar. Um, I can tell listening in my earphones, I'm still a little stuffy. I know you're a little stuffy. We, we didn't really make a big deal out of it, but SHOT Show not only uh, unveiled a bunch of new uh, semi-auto pistols, it also unveiled COVID, of which we and several of our coworkers managed to catch. And we're all fine, but uh, yeah, we both still got kind of the the stuffy thing going on. So please pardon my nasal twang. I mean, the, the standing joke is shot show crud. Everybody who goes to right. shot show comes home right. with a shot show crud, but this year it's shot show crud COVID edition. <laughs> exactly. But the nice thing is it's that mild kind of the COVID light now. So uh, uh, I've not heard of anybody getting really badly sick. It was just, just an annoying sick. So, and of course, I gave well, it to my lovely wife. I haven't been wife. able to do dishes since I got back. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't make a bed or, you know, do laundry. So it was it was pretty terrible. <laughs> anyway, so that kind of explains uh, uh, if, if we sound a little nasally this time. We're still working that out. But I tested negative because I just got back from a media event in Texas. So I took a, another test just to make sure I was sure I was clear. And I was. 
but uh you didn't want to spread the love uh try not to i i try <laughs> to be good that way you know unlike and i think you and i were in the same meeting i know who gave it to us there was a Somebody in the industry that, remember, he was sweating and said, oh, I don't feel very good. And I'm like, oh, great. And then at the end of the meeting, what he do? Stuck his hand out and automatically I shook his hand. And well, here we are today. So now it's all good. <laughs> Actually, I talked to Will Dabbs and he said, this is what we've been waiting for. It doesn't kill as many people now. It's just kind of like the annual cold or flu. So, you know, you still don't want to give it to everybody, but uh, hopefully it's kind of downgraded itself to where it's just another thing that we'll be picking up every year probably at shot show like a like a wheeled cart or some free stickers <laughs> <laughs> so i'll choose the free stickers thank yeah, you yeah exactly <laughs> given the choice exactly well let's dive into this cuz there really this could be a big long multi-hour episode cuz i really felt like there was a lot of stuff that got unveiled and there was some discussion of, you know, are they going to do any of that? Because uh, everybody's still running behind, backordered, and uh, we're starting to catch up. But it, the last two years have been crazy, and people have been cranking out guns as fast as they could and still being backordered. So you kind of wondered if if the R&D department, uh, you know, got as much love as normal. And, and I would say, yeah, we're... It, the positive is there's a lot of cash out there. So I think they, they threw it at their engineering labs. So, yeah, I was actually surprised because um, prior to this shot show, the new product announcements have been um, thin. Yeah. Thinner than normal. I would agree. Right? Either things have been uh, held back, put back on the shelf for a, an, a another period of time or, or whatever, just because companies were struggling to keep up with the current product line you know yep. make enough to go around and i i think um many slash most of them have caught up at this point or are have made a made progress in yeah. catching up and uh, we're starting to see new stuff you know hit the streets again which is yep. which is a really nice change tom you're the editor of american handgun or the expert on new handguns in the industry so take it away i i th i think the first thing is to kind of point out the the uber trend that's uh you know been emerging i in a big way over the past six months or so uh -huh. and i would call that the the 2011 uh the year of the 2011 we're just seeing lots and lots of uh, uh 2011 variant type pistols and for those who aren't familiar uh take a, a 1911 platform double stack it get creative with the caliber offerings most of them are coming out in nine millimeter. Yeah. And uh, what you end up with is all the beauty of the classic 1911 design with more capacity. Yep. Yep. Uh, whatever your caliber may be. So we're talking double stack slash one and a half stack, you know, options out there. So, you know, in nine millimeter, we're looking at 16, 18, 20 rounds. Yeah. You know, including the plus one uh, in a pistol that's, that's carryable. 10 millimeter and f even 45. So if you've got big giant meat hooks, you can wrap around the grip. There are a uh, number of double stack 45s out there. Well, uh, you know, it's funny you say that because um, Eric Gilhouse, our American cop editor, and I were were uh, tooling around the floor and we stumbled into the EAA booth. Uh -huh. And they're actually calling their line of, of such pistols the 2311 series. Okay. And as you just said, they're going to do multi-caliber. All right, they've got nine millimeter options, but also 45 options. And what kind of lit both Eric and I up just because fun and cool yeah. are 10 millimeter versions. You know, so we're looking at, you know, mid teens capacity for a 10 millimeter. And amazingly, the grip and pistol size was perfectly manageable. Really? You know, in that platform, uh, they They've squeezed it in there somehow without, uh, you know, making making it just a, a truly monstrous grip size. You know, I, I have fairly average size hands and it was just fine for me. Trigger reach and everything was good. And Black Hills is come out with some new honey badgers that we set in a meeting and and it's it's a pretty stout round. So imagine a a double stack magazine full of those. You you've got a lot of uh, power in your hand uh with with one of these guns so that that's what they were talking about they kind of designed it with uh bare safety in mind so you know a double stack reasonable size 10 millimeter stoked with those honey badgers 
you don't have to carry the uh, the casul anymore if you don't want to. Yeah, it is. It is uh, an interesting option. Um, um, you know, their their target market for that round is just as you said, it's the the outdoor critters. So yeah. it's a you know a easy to carry gun to tote around in the outdoors. Yep. You know, a, a twenty three eleven type platforms. Interesting. Exactly. You know, the thing I like about those those honey badgers too. They're they're solid. Uh, copper bullet design so you get good penetration but they're light for caliber yeah so, so the recoil exactly. is very very tame considering what you're getting you know coming out the other end yep uh, very comfortable to shoot so cool so the year of the 2011 or whatever you choose to call it big trend and i agree yeah i mean you look at all of them coming out we saw uh, springfield armory's got the prodigy uh-huh. out now we just uh, have covered that recently and, um, you know, they're doing nine millimeter. Who knows where they'll go with that and other calibers if if they, you know, choose to go that direction. Uh, Staccato has been doing this for quite some time. Yeah. And uh, they've actually got a new 2011 type gun, the CS. And it's they, they bill it as all staccato, only smaller or something, <laughs> something to that effect. And it's it's really compelling for a carry gun. I mean, it's a uh, 1911 ambidextrous safety levers and all that, but, you know, very compact three and a half inch barrel. And it still is uh memory serves correctly. It's a 16 plus one capacity of nine millimeter. Yeah. Wow. And it's small, you know, yeah. it kind of, kind of changes everything in my view. Cause I've, uh, I've always loved the 1911 platform, but I've, I've never been in this day and age, I've never been, you know, as comfortable with a eight plus one give or take capacity, you yeah. know, that, with all the craziness going on in this world that I'd, I'd rather have more. And there you go. That's your answer. So sitting here thinking about this, really, I guess we're seeing a resurgence of the 1911 platform, which it never has gone away. No question about that. But the, uh, the darling of the dance in the last decade has been polymer nine millimeters. And now mm-hmm. you're seeing so many folks going back to this 1911 platform in all kinds of calibers, single double stack, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, I'm even looking at Savage. They came out with a whole line of 1911s. So you think it's just everything old is new again, or it's it's people are rediscovering it because they've been neglecting it? Or what's your thoughts on, on that whole trend? An, an interesting observation. And I personally, I think it's the, I think the, the 2X11 factor has a lot to do with it because that is what's causing law enforcement agencies to move back in mass. Yeah. You know, certainly not a majority or anything at this point, but lots and lots of agencies are kind of adopting a staccato like platform. Right. uh, You know, which that to me is very telling. And I, I think I would have to say that, uh, agencies are recognizing the inherent beauty and benefit of the 1911 platform, you know, in terms of easy to shoot well, yeah, uh, very safe design when uh, carried properly. Yep. Um, you know, there's just there's a lot of goodness to it. And if uh, capacity is no longer a limitation, then why not? Yeah. And when people are talking about how uh, shootable their polymer nine is, what do they always say? Well, it's got a 1911 grip angle. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Why not just go to the source? Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so 1911s, 2011s, whatever, you know, it's, it's, it's not going away and it's surging back stronger than ever, but now we'll, we'll shift gears and, and I want to see the sparkle in your eyes. Beretta came out with a, a 92 X one single action only. Mm-hmm. Are you, are you buying five of them? You're a huge 92 fan. Which I don't understand yeah, personally, but probably I've <laughs> I've always um, I've had a desktop wallpaper to have had on and off my computers for for years of a an old classic single action Beretta kind of yeah. in that general style and uh, yeah they're just beautiful guns so <laughs> I have a soft spot for them but but you know what else is interesting they're they're kind of bringing back a lot of their classic yes. stuff in new and refreshed format yep like. And and you and I were together. We we handled this one in who and odd the cheetah one, one two three cheetah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, gotta love that. Yeah, uh, but but you know what else? We're seeing new models of the thirty thirty two Tomcat. Yes, and we're seeing models of the twenty two long rifle Bobcat with a threaded barrel. Yep, how fun is that? 
I mean, that's a, a tiny little 22 pistol yeah. and you put a tiny little 22 suppressor on it and you have a, an overall package. It's about the length of a full size gun, but it's suppressed. Yep, exactly. And, and the cheetah uh, now comes with an optics cut, like, like a lot of things yep. do. So you can have your cheetah and a, your optic two. And factory models of the 92 series with optics cuts too. Yeah. And they're, uh, Langdon Tactical has been doing that for a while. And uh, I know Masayub is, has uh, kind of been all over those. He loves right. the Berettas with the optics cut. And uh, see those going mainstream. Kind of interesting. So yeah. I'd like to see it. <laughs> now, this may be the most contentious gun of the pack. Uh, and, and I understand why. But the Smith & Wesson 5.7 M&P. Now, the reason I say contentious, because... I think there's a misunderstanding about the cartridge itself. There's nothing wrong with the cartridge when you understand what it was originally kind of proposed as. Where it really got its uh, popularity in this country was the Secret Service wanted a pistol that they could punch body armor when they're facing assailants who may be armored up. And the 5.7 goes through armor like like a hot knife through butter. But with With the right ammo. With the right ammo. Mm-hmm. But... There's a lot of folks that are touting it as the new nine or whatever. And in, it's, in my opinion, which is, is worth the cost of admission, <laughs> but my opinion is that's, that's not the gun for you. It's a special purpose gun, not your general carry gun. So you always like to disagree with me, Tom. Your thoughts? I'm not sure I can disagree with you on this one. I'm, <laughs> sure. Let's just say I'm, I'm watching yeah. and observing. Yeah. You know, I think I think so much of it depends on the the choice of ammo, the pairing of ammo. Right. With that gun, because it's a I mean, it's it's high speed. We're we're getting in the 2000 foot per second range, which yeah. things start to get uh, less predictable there yeah. in terms of traditional handgun performance, you know, in a favorable way to stopping power. Uh, but it's borderline, you know, 2000 yeah. is kind of right where right at that line between pistol and rifle uh velocities so i think the jury's out exactly you know, no one no one wants to get shot with one that's that's <laughs> uh, a given yeah right exactly uh, but so the question to me is you know looking at the the civilian world uh the objectives are different right um yeah maybe you know some guy's gonna bust into your house wearing body armor and you know i don't know how likely that is but but i think in the civilian world the the issue is stopping quickly yeah. You know, somebody's attacking you on the street, the parking garage, the restaurant, whatever. Uh, the goal is to stop them from doing what they're doing quickly. The goal isn't to to kill or, you know, whatever else. It's to stop them so you can get the heck away. Exactly. Um, will the five seven do that? I don't know. I don't know. I think, um, you know, I'm a believer in street data over a long period of time. So anytime some there's something, you know quote unquote, new ish like that. Uh, I'm going to sit back and remain Skeptical. neutral on the topic until we see. And there have been a few uh, U.S. shootings and the but that's a, a tiny little data set. Uh, but I will mm-hmm. say of the ones I've heard, it did not perform very well uh, again on the quick stop. But it all goes to placement and the situation. So. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm not willing to condemn the cartridge. I just think folks need to understand its limitations. If if you're comfortable with its limitations in your particular scenario and situation, okay, great. I wouldn't, you know, the, the first rule of a gunfight is have a gun. So if um, that's what you choose to carry. Oh, yeah. Have a gun. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I probably am not going to jump on that bandwagon until, like you said, we, we see a little more performance data terminal ballistics on the street so we'll see yeah well let's be real clear here um i definitely want one <laughs> and i actually have a an evaluation uh pistol that just arrived i gotta go pick it up ah. from smith and wesson and uh, you know the mnp 57 and i am really looking forward to checking it out because uh there are a lot of other reasons to use and enjoy firearms other than uh, carry or self-defense it may be perfectly good for that i'm just saying yep. I, I don't know you know um but i'm really looking forward to shooting one because that caliber is a whole lot of fun yeah um to to shoot moving on 
and this is one of your cover guns, the Arms Corps 5.0. You're you're a big fan, yeah. aren't you? And we've actually had a little behind the scenes input. Uh, Roy Huntington is uh, our special assignments editor, and I know he has worked with their engineering team on on some of that. So I have not even fondled one at this point. What's so cool about the Arms Corps 5.0? <laughs> It, well, as you said, it's been a work in progress for quite some time now, a couple, couple of years, and um, it's a fantastic little gun. I mean, the you know the the action is kind of uh, new and innovative, part part of part gas driven, so to speak. Yeah. The barrel is square. <laughs> you know, the oh, machine, a square barrel. Yeah, look at the muzzle under one of those guys, wow. and uh, you will see that. So the the whole you know lockup is interesting. Uh, Dad's had a great time with it, and. Um, you know, got really re- good results from that gun. It's an exceptionally smooth action. You know, it's an all-metal gun. Yeah. Um, feels like butter. I was going to say, everybody I talked to, you know, the the standard question is shot. You run into a buddy and, you know, how you doing? How's the family? How's your mom and them? And then you say, so what's cool? What have you seen? And probably the most common answer I got was, have you seen that that Arms Corps 5.0? It's it's pretty slick little whistle. So, unfortunately, I did not manage to do that. And I, our friends at Arm Cor- Arms Corps, sorry, <laughs> but I've been listening to everybody else talk about how great it is. So looking forward to get my hands on one. Yeah, ab- absolutely. So hey, I saw I saw a couple other interesting things at uh, at Shot Show. Okay. Did I um, spent some time at the Ed Brown booth? Ah, and they are doing a line. They're calling it the Fueled series. Okay. And basically what they're doing is they're taking platform, you know, production platform guns. In this case, the uh, the Smith & Wesson MMP platform, right? Uh-huh. They're saying that's really cool. A lot of people like it, um, but we want to Ed Brownize it. Ah, okay. <laughs> so they're, they're kind of rebuilding the platform, you know, with custom slide, custom barrel, uh, custom frame rails, accuracy rails, really? um, you know, other select pieces and parts that are designed and machined, you know, by Ed Brown and what you end up with is this gorgeous custom gun that follows the design parameters of the M&P line. Oh, so interesting. Sneak preview. You might be seeing that in the pages of uh, of American Handgunner real soon. So beautiful pistols, though, and I love the idea. You know, if you really if you like the service pistol idea and you're used to that, uh, but you want something spiffy. That's, yeah. Uh, a production perform and look great while doing it yeah interesting concept always been a big fan of theirs and uh our our friend john may used to be there he's he has passed in the past year so unfortunate but ed brown continues on doing what they do and and building great guns so Mm -hmm. so okay what else you've got i know you've got a whole notebook there you and i had there's that there's that uh the guns you and i had to arm wrestle for over over uh who gets them (laughs) for their respective magazines yes and i believe that was at the cz booth yes yeah (laughs) we almost did have to wrestle should we drop a hint i got orange you got red was that what we decided yes I think I think I picked the um, a couple of new handguns the the TS two I believe it is yes uh, with the or- the orange model that orange metal yeah. grip panels on the side it's, oh, it's an eye catcher pistol. yeah yes it is they I guess they they're labeling that as a competition gun but to me it's a it's a Tom's fun gun <laughs> <laughs> well well so is the uh, one I've got coming that it's the Dan Wesson DWX and it's it's kind of a carry slash competition type of gun. It's got red grip panels mm-hmm. and our, our own Will Dabs is going to be taking that through the paces. So, oh, Tom, what are you, what are you reaching for there? You hear the zipper through the microphone there? <laughs> oh, how did you get one already? I know people. I guess you do. You ask the right people. <laughs> yeah. So. I hate to take work away from Will, but you could do the cover story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah let him do it he's he's, he's that yeah. man's got away with words oh he does absolutely so <laughs> well very cool so have you shot it yet i have not i just uh-huh. picked it up the other day so very cool i gotta uh, gotta get out to the range and check this guy out excellent excellent so continue on down your list okay um you know what maybe we could go on all day but maybe the the last one that i kind of Pulled out of the hat or a shot show find. There's a, um, a company called Voodoo Gunworks. Uh huh. And 
through a uh, uh, brand in the industry I kind of stumbled on on their booth. And what's interesting about them is they're kind of taking an innovative approach to the manufacturing process. The, you know, one thing that we saw all over SHOT Show was these, these quote unquote custom type guns. But where things get interesting is producing quote unquote custom guns with a more automated factory process, right. right? Where you can get higher quality, better fit and finish and all that, um, you know, with less machining time and less hand gunsmithing time for each model. So the prices, you know, come down a little bit. So you're not paying a full boat for a, for a hand built custom pistol. So anyway, uh, what these folks have figured out is that rather than trying to machine a, a 1911 type frame as a single unit, they're CNC machining it in two halves, kind of like a huh. a clamshell yeah. approach, right? And what that allows them to do is get in all the nooks and crannies, you know, on in the interior of the frame with less machining and less time and do it with more precision, ah. you know, so they end up the, the two halves that come right out of the machines are close in tolerance, require far, far, far less um, hand fitting. Oh. And then what they do is they basically weld these things together, you know, go through a, a polish and checkering process after that. And you end up with a, a solid frame piece at the end. But the the work that went into doing that saves just a ton of time. Interesting. And they're able to produce a really, really slick 1911 in about 90 minutes. Really? Rather than, you know, weeks or huh. <laughs> or whatever it is for a, for a hand built one. Wow. So kind of cool stuff. Yeah, we're. um we're going to be be covering those in an upcoming issue. Yeah. Uh, but I, I the novel approach to engineering kind of intrigued me. Yeah. On those. And that strikes me as one of those things that if it, if it really is the better mousetrap, everybody will be doing it in five years. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. So it was it was interesting. They had a gauge set up, you know, in the, the booth and they had a gun locked into this gauge. And basically what it was doing was measuring the variance uh, in lockup from when you rack from on the slide moves and um i think it was 51 millionths was the tolerance on this thing and it was just wow time after time after time it was just huh. you know hitting the lockup right on the nose just no variance whatsoever so huh. super accurate gun feels buttery slick and uh a little less money very cool yeah looking forward to a report of that yeah, so am I. I'm looking forward to getting my hands on one at the range. You know. Yeah, it kind of strikes me as, you know, when we all had the plastic guns growing up, they were usually two halves glued together. And yeah. I wonder if that inspired <laughs> them, you know? I'm thinking they're not using glue no, to do no, that. No. It's uh, definitely <laughs> certainly welded. I don't know. JB Weld, man. That'll. And you can fix you know, an engine you, you block cannot that tell stuff. at all on the, on the finished product, even, you know, before coating and finishing and all that stuff. So, yeah, very cool. Well, have you got anything else for us? Yeah, those are the biggies. Okay. I think uh, you know we have a couple of surprises coming up in the in the magazine, but um, lots to pick from. We have more new guns we want to cover than we have pages uh, available yeah. to do so. So we might have to break out the video cameras and uh, get some online stuff done. With some of these. There you go. Well, I've got one more, and okay. I've saved the best for last. When is your yeet? Cannon. That's Y E E T. Your Yeet Cannon coming. <laughs> you don't even know what to say, do you? I I love the name. <laughs> I'll say that. <laughs> well, for folks that have no clue as to what we're talking about, High Point came out with a new Striker Nine, and it's got the typical bells and whistles of uh, any modern Striker Nine, and it is known as the Yeet cannon and yeah. apparently yeet is some modern slang for people under the age of 30 that they know what that is i literally had to look it up i didn't know i'd heard people use it but i couldn't tell you what it was what it meant proper usage any of that stuff but apparently when they came out with this new pistol they had like an internet naming contest and the name <laughs> that stuck was the yeet cannon so it was uh I, I, I picked it up. I've not shot it. I mean, <clears throat> the price point is very, very low, and it's got all the bells and whistles. I believe it's even got an optic cut. So, and you know, I will say Roy Huntington 
is a big fan of of High Point. Roy says, like a lot of things in the industry, their their qualities come up. So, granted, it's not a Kimber, but if you can only afford the least expensive of the least expensive, he said Aim Point will actually do what it needs to be done. So, having said all that, well, I, see, I'm just impressed that they that they took the bold move of allowing an internet naming competition because <laughs> you know what happens with those. I mean, who was it? It was a uh, and didn't Canada had one of those for one of their research ships or something? Yes, and, Bodie and the winner Mc was Boatface. Bodie McBoatface. <laughs> that's so, ex- that's funny. Great this, minds think alike because that was the example <laughs> or something. I would, I'm, I'm glad I'm glad ye Cannon won. I I don't know. That's I, a far I would, cooler name. I don't know, Gunny McGunface. I I would like that too, <laughs> but I don't know. So I suppose we'll have to review it at some point, even though yep. they may not want to talk to us after we've kind of sat here and made a bit of fun of them. But again, I'd, I'd be kind of proud to say when people ask me what I carry, I say I carry a Yeet cannon. <laughs> I mean, that's a great answer. <laughs> you know, a, a dual rig yeet, d- dual shoulder holster rig yeet cannons. Yeah. In, a, in ivory with gold plated triggers. How about that? Ivory grips, like gold plated trigger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tom McHale, I, I appreciate you slumming with us here on the Guns Magazine podcast. Appreciate you taking time to talk about all these new guns, and uh, you can go back to drooling on the new Beretta 92, and uh, we'll see all this stuff and American Handgunner. And what's that website? AmericanHandgunner.com. A tough one to remember. So, well, anyway, Tom, thank you very much, and we'll reconvene for the Revolvers of 2023 here on the Guns Magazine podcast. Say thank you. Say thank you. Say See, I you. thought you were done. I thought that was, was. the closing remark. And I, for once, I was being polite and I was going to let you finish and just, you know, end <laughs> gracefully. But thank you. I always love having Tom on the show. And as he noted, we'll be coming back with another episode with all the great wheel guns for 2023. If you enjoyed this episode, you might check out number 143 titled you don't know jack about the weaver stance i'd also suggest you listen to episode number 160 on how to accurize your 1911 with roy huntington and finally you might want to download episode number 164 on pistol reliability also with roy if there's a topic you want to hear somebody you want us to interview or you want to share your thoughts please drop me a line that's editor at gunsmagazine.com As always, you can subscribe to us on your favorite podcast directory, such as Spotify, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, Audible, and several others. And you can always get the latest episode on YouTube and at GunsMagazine.com. At the same time, please subscribe to the Gun Cranks audio podcast on those same directories, or you can watch it at the Gun Cranks YouTube channel. I'd also ask you to visit our great sister publications, American Handgunner Magazine at AmericanHandgunner.com, AmericanCop.com, and take a look at our numerous special editions available for sale on our websites and at Amazon. And finally, I'd like to remind you to visit our sponsor, 4Patriots. You can find out more about their food kits and other preparedness supplies at 4Patriots.com. That's the number four, the word Patriots, and .com. Well, that's it for this episode of the Guns Magazine podcast. For the entire staff at FMG Publications, I'm Guns Magazine editor Brent Wheat. Now get out there and get shooting.